Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. September 3rd, 2024. Let's get into it. And we're just going to go through some Twitter posts here. Uh, you know, I, I hate to start with this story because at the latter part of this video, we're going to get into some serious topics. If you ever watch Garland Nixon, he just goes on and talks about things. And uh, I, that's kind of what I want to do towards the end of this video. But I want to get you the news first. Uh, the U.S. has seized Nicolas Maduro's plane because he allegedly purchased it in violation of U.S. sanctions. The plane was delivered to Florida. And let's watch that video now. This does not happen, obviously, every day where U.S. authorities go in and seize the plane of a head of state. But that, that is essentially what's happened this morning. Can you break this down for us? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the plane of Nicolas Maduro, the president of Venezuela, is now in the hands of the United States. All right. So what's my point here? Well, you know, what would happen if Russia seized Air Force One? Or let's just say Iraq seized Air Force One. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, the United States, people hate us, man. They hate us all around the world. I don't blame them. Uh, let's get into the Ukraine war for just one second. <clears throat> In Kharkov, missile strikes were carried out on the permanent deployment sites of PMCs and the USA and Poland. Estonian military personnel and military personnel from Lithuania and Germany were also destroyed. In addition, eight Vampire MLRS launchers of Czech manufacturer were destroyed. The rest will, are, is still being established. NATO air ambulances will rush the Ukraine border in a few hours. Helicopters are flying in. That's from my German, G-E-R-O-M-A-N. <coughs> what? We're, we're going to talk about Ukraine here in a bit. Uh, this is General Mike Flynn. The war in Ukraine needs to end. And the only way to do that is to get the establishment's hacks out. And uh, Senator Tim Scott, McConnell Press, and get real Donald Trump back in. Ukraine is a complete waste of lives, sadly. U.S. international prestige and a great deal of U.S. taxpayer wealth. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. All right, so let's just keep going. Um, breaking. RFK says Fauci is responsible for millions of deaths during the COVID pandemic. Let's watch that video. I wrote a, you know, I wrote a, a book about Fauci. And, you know, there's, there's, Great there's, you know, there's a, a 2,200 footnotes in the book, and I invited people at the beginning of the book. All, all my sources in the books are, um, I did something that had never been done before, which I put them on a, a barcode next to them, so you can actually, as you read, you can look up the, the sourcing. And I invited people to find problems with the book. I said, Tell me what they are, and we will correct them. We had 27 editions, so we had the capacity to correct anything. Anybody, and we never, nobody ever told us any, any actual error in that book. And if you read that book, it's hard to, um, it's, you know, I don't look into Anthony Fauci's head. I don't look into Bill Gates' head. I don't say he did this because he was greedy or because... He was manipulative. I just lay out what they did, and the story speaks for itself. And, you know, it's a story of really of people involved in really terrible, terrible, immoral, homicidal, criminal behavior. And, uh, and using a position in government that, that he had for 50 years without any election, um, to clamp down these totalitarian controls that were not science-based and that everybody now admits there was no science. In fact, yesterday, the chief attorney for FDA admitted that there was no reason. He admitted because he lost the case in court against the doctor, but there was no, no reason to discourage people from taking ivermectin. Ivermectin was a, was a very, very devastating cure for COVID. It literally obliterated COVID. And, you know, by depriving people of Ivermectin, uh, we 
many, many people, died, millions of people around the globe died, and they didn't need to. There were cures for COVID from day one, and very effective cures. Right. And, but they didn't want that. They wanted the vaccine only. And there was a rule, there's a rule, you know, a little known federal rule that they were, they were all aware of, which said that you cannot issue an emergency use authorization for a vaccine if there is an existing remedy that has already been approved for any use. So if they admitted that hydroxychloroquine or famtidivine or ivermectin or any of the 25 existing therapeutic drugs that were very effective against COVID, if they admitted that any of them were effective, the whole vaccine project would have fallen apart. They couldn't have done it. And, um, and so they decided that they were going to pretend that there was no cure except for the vaccine. And, uh, and they gave people a product that was not properly tested. And then now we have a whole generation of kids that has now you know, got myocarditis, um, these terrible heart problems in young athletic boys. Uh, you're seeing so many kids now drop dead on playing fields. Right. Um, and that we never saw anything like this before. On average, it was, I think, 29 a month globally, athletes who died on the field. And we were getting down to hundreds a month now. Right. And it's, uh, you know, and there, there still has to be a reckoning. The mainstream media has, hasn't caught up with the science. But the science is out there now, and it's devastating. All right, so that was uh, RFK. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. That little freaking troll, Fachi, killed millions of people around the world, and he's still walking free. And you know why? Because of Democrats. And we're going to get into Democrats here in just a minute in the video. Oh, my God. What, and you know what? I don't hate the old liberal Democrats. I hate the new fascist, Marxist, communist Democrats. That's what I'm talking about. So well, I just want to clarify that. Uh, DC Dranko, this is one of the most mind-blowing videos about the Ukraine war from Robert F. Kennedy. RFK explains why NATO keeps adding countries, so these new countries have to buy NATO-specific weapons from Boeing, Lockheed, Northrop, etc. The U.S. loaned more than $100 billion to Ukraine so it could impose loan conditions. Imagine what $100 billion could do to help the American people. Do you realize you're being ruled by lunatics here in the United States? I don't get it, man. And the, 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 these communist Marxist Democrats just march along to the tune. They're the Borg, man. They are the Borg. All right, so let's just keep going. Like selling government assets, guess what's been sold to Monsanto to pay war bills? Ukraine's farmland, the breadbasket of Europe. Well, I, I've talked about this. BlackRock, Monsanto, a lot of big corporations uh, they, they think they're going to march into Ukraine and just, uh, well, it, it, supposedly they bought all the land and everything. But when Ukraine ceases to exist, <laughs> I think they're going to be out some investment money, don't you? Uh, which is a good thing. I mean, you know, whether you hate Russia or love Russia or whatever, I, I, I don't want to see these big corporations take over the farmland in Ukraine. I think it should be up to the small farmers in Ukraine. Once upon a time, there was a Democrat party that believed in these principles, but evidently they don't know more, huh? Uh, guess what's my, uh, let's see. Guess who got a multi-trillion dollar contract to rebuild Ukraine's infrastructure after the war, who has a massive equity stake in every company listed above? Once again, BlackRock. The entire money laundering death machine plunging us into World War III, Series 1, uh, sir, it serves one ultimate master, BlackRock. Agreed. That was D.C. Dranko, by the way. This is a war that should have never happened. It's a war the Russians tried repeatedly to settle on terms that were very, very beneficial to Ukraine and us. The major thing they wanted was for us to keep NATO out of the Ukraine. The big military contractors want to add new countries to NATO all the time. Why? Because then that country has to conform its military purchases to NATO weapon specifications, which means certain companies, Northrop North Grumman, Raytheon, General Dynamics, Boeing, and Lockheed, get a trapped market. In March of 2022, we committed $113 billion 
Just to give you an example, we could have built a home for almost every homeless person in this country. We then committed another $24 billion since then, two months ago, and now President Biden is asking for another $60 billion. But the big, big expenses are going to come after the war, when we have to rebuild you all the things that we destroyed. Mitch McConnell was asked, can we really afford to spend $113 billion to Ukraine? He said, don't worry. It's not really going to Ukraine. It's, it's going, going to, to American defense manufacturers. So he just admitted it's a money laundering scheme. And who do you think owns every one of those companies? BlackRock. Yeah, BlackRock. So Tim Scott, during the Republican debate, said, don't worry. It's not a gift to Ukraine. It's a loan. So raise your hand if you think that that loan's ever getting paid back. Yeah, of course it's not. So why do they call it a loan? Because if they call it a loan, they can impose loan conditions. And what are the loan conditions that we impose on? Number one, an extreme austerity program, so that if you're poor in Ukraine, you're gonna be poor forever. Number two, most important, Ukraine has to put all of its government-owned assets up for sale to multinational corporations including all of its agricultural land, the biggest single asset in Europe, in Ukraine. There's been a thousand years of war fought over that land. It's the richest farmland in the world. It's the breadbasket of Europe. 500,000 kids almost, Ukrainian kids, have died to keep that land as part of Ukraine. They almost certainly didn't know about this loan condition. They've already sold 30% of it. The buyers were DuPont, Cargill, and Monsanto. Who do you think owns all of those companies? Blackrock. Yeah, BlackRock. And then in December, President Biden gave out the contract to rebuild Ukraine. And who do you think got that contract? BlackRock. So they're doing this right in front of us. They don't even care that we know anymore because they know that they can get away with it. And how do they know that? Because they have a strategy. And that strategy is an old, old strategy, which is they keep us at war with each other. They keep us hating on each other. They keep the Republicans and Democrats fighting each other and black against white and all these divisions that they sow. Uh, let's see. Let's just keep going. Josh Dunlap, RFK exposes the absolute truth about Ukraine in three minutes. Now, that might be the same video. I don't know. As I've just been bookmarking these. <clears throat> I agree with Nicole, this is General Mike Flynn again, I agree with Nicole and may God give them the strength, wisdom, and especially the security they both need to win and then finish the job. You do realize what the deep state has done to Donald Trump. We had the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, then we had the Ukraine hoax, they tried to impeach him, then they, they, they did the third impeachment, then they came out. <laughs> with January 6th, that was a setup. We now know that. Nancy Pelosi has admitted that she did, could have called in the National Guard and she didn't do it. I, I, I explained to people on Parler back then, 2020, I said that this thing was a setup. You know, evidently I'm being remembered. I, like I said, I'm seeing 5,000 followers on Parler. I don't even, I, I, I don't think that's right. I think Parler's still broken, but what the hell? That, I guess I, that's how many I had back then. I don't remember. Good God, that was four years ago. I'm an old dude, man. My brain cells don't work the way they used to. But anyway, so uh, yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. They started it, and they'll finish it. But then it's a picture of, of John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy. You know, I'll put, let's put that up on the video. It's a beautiful picture. It's a beautiful picture, and, and I hope it's true. I mean, you do understand Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was assassinated by the CIA. There's more than ample proof about that. Go back and watch hundreds of videos. And like I said, they, they, they say they're going to release the evidence, but what evidence is there left? You know it's all been destroyed. It's been purged from every database in the government. Now, maybe somebody somewhere, uh, you know, the government's all about blackmail. So somebody probably stashed it <laughs> somewhere so they could blackmail somebody else. But most of them people are dead now. But still, you know, who knows? Something may come out. You never know. You never know. Uh, oh, this is a great photo. I'm going to put this up towards the end of the video. Love this. It's happening big time. Republicans plus Democrats united against evil. 
Yeah. And, and, well, liberal Democrats, not the Marxist, communist uh, Democrats that we have in power. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Wow. Biden wrote an eco ordering all federal agencies to give voter registration to illegal aliens. Why is this not all over the news? Share this. Go viral. You won't believe what Arizona is doing with election security. Find out by clicking on the link in my bio. This is Carter Hughes. And, uh, well, we'll watch this video. The problem that we have now is that the Biden administration, there's a Biden executive order that orders all federal agencies to provide voter registration information to everyone they come in contact with. We also know that state election officials are not permitted to ask for proof of citizenship for applicants who fill out the federal form. So if you're a non-citizen in this country, whether you're an asylum seeker or a foreign student or whatever, if a government official hands you a voter registration form, you're going to think that you need to fill it out. Then you are going to be unlawfully registered to vote. If you vote, it is a deportable criminal offense. I, you know, okay. So I want to get, I'm going to get out of the bookmarks here. I just got too many to go through and I want to get into some posts. Uh, so here's, here's a couple of posts that I've put up. Can you say that Marsh Walsh blog is a, is a moron? <laughs> Marsh Walsh. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's with the Daily Wire or Matt Walsh, excuse me. Uh, he's a complete freaking moron. And, uh, I'll, I'll just read you, uh, what a, what an, a terribly uneducated, stupid, take on one of the most healing foods on earth. And, and so what do you come out? He posted that raw milk was bad for you. Raw milk is one of the best things you can drink. Pasteurized milk is bad for you. But he came out in support of pasteurized milk and against raw milk. If I could go to an Amish farm right, right now, uh, which I think you still can, and get some raw milk, I'm going to tell you, it's uh, so much better for you. I mean, think about it. I, it. Okay, let's just use a little bit of common sense. For 200 years, there wasn't pasteurized milk. Everybody had to get their milk from the cow, and that's how they drank it. It wasn't until the corporations took over the milk and pasteurized it that then, then we had pasteurized milk, and they said, oh, it's, it's to kill all the bacteria and the, 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 the whatever. Anyway, so this moron... Matt Walsh came out and said that uh, raw milk wasn't good for you. All right, so this, this was a great post. I, I like this one a lot. Th this is by me, uh, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Ellis, that cybersecurity guy, or that cybersec guy on X. That's where I encourage you to go. As the warmonger totalitarian censorship-loving Democrats want to launch long-range Western missiles deep into Russia, perhaps we need to walk them back from this stupid idea. How would you feel if Russia was launching missiles into your hometown, which is what's taking place in Belgrade uh, right now? I think global thermonuclear war is a bad idea. How about you? Doesn't seem the Democrats uh, think global thermonuclear war is a bad idea. But anyway, uh, this, this, this is my next post. Uh, let's get into this one. The warmongering, totalitarian, censorship-loving, world-destroying Democrats are getting their comeuppance. They are willing to sacrifice over a million Ukrainians. By the way, I, people are speculating now there's over a million de dead Ukrainians. I'm telling you right now, I think it's a fact. But, uh, you know, who knows, right? And Palestinians, to maintain their power and wealth. Pure evil. That's who the Democrats are. They're pure evil. Project Ukraine is rapidly crumbling before their evil eyes. Towns and villages are falling at an ever-increasing rapid pace to the overwhelming Russian military forces. We have seen this story repeatedly for 1,000 years. You understand the Russians have been around that civilization. Good God, it's like China, man. They go, <laughs> they go back. I mean, you know, you, the United States really didn't come into being until 1776. I mean, when you look at the Russians and the Chinese, I mean, they've been around... And Russia has never been conquered. Now, granted, they've been under different hats, you know. Uh, uh, but mainly, I mean, that, that, that civilization goes way back, and especially now their history after World War II. Uh, by the way, there was a video I wanted to show you, but I'm not going to do it. It was a, a picture of Moscow. Uh, and it was at night, probably about midnight, and everybody's walking around. Everybody's happy. No crime. 
nothing, the streets are clean, everything looked good. What can you say about any U.S. city? City. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you about that video. So we have seen this story repeatedly for a thousand years. The question now is whether these warmongering lunatic Democrats will use tactical nuclear weapons to salvage the hundreds of billions of dollars they spent in U.S. taxpayer dollars. They don't even look at them as taxpayer dollars. They look at it as their money. You understand that? All the money that you give to the warmongering Democrats, they don't, they don't consider that uh, money for your benefit. They consider that their money to give to, to Ukraine and, and Israel uh, to fight these foreign wars. I'm, I'm just saying, man, I, you know, I don't understand how American people think. Why are, why are we with pitchforks and knives in the streets right now? It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and then, uh, then we all die as Russia launches their much superior nuclear arsenal of weapons. You do understand they are superior in their nuclear arsenal. Their weapons have been modernized. They have them. I mean, think about it. Russia is like, I, I don't know, what, three, four times the size of the United States? How are you going to hunt down all these mobile launchers that are out there uh, rolling around in the forest in the, in the Sierra? Yeah, we got satellites. I mean, are you going to be able to track all those? I mean, even if we nuked the hell out of Russia and we got in a first strike, there's no way we're going to hit all those nuclear weapons. They're going to launch and they're going to destroy the United States, man. Democrats, that's what Democrats want. Why is on earth is anybody voting Democrat at this point? I don't get it. Then we all die as Russia launches their much superior. My question to you is, will they end the world with global thermonuclear war or negotiate? Now, this is where we're going to kind of get into the, the tail end of the video. All right? Right now, because... The election's coming up. You've got November 5th, and I'm sure right now they've got assassins out for JFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, and Trump. So they might not live to make it to the election, and they probably have a false flag event planned where they're just going to blow up a nuclear city and, and, or nuke a city in the United States or, or release a biological or a chemical weapon somewhere. And then they're going to declare martial law and we won't even have an election. That's, that's kind of my feeling on this because right now they got no hope. None. The war in Ukraine is coming to an end. And I mean, I'm watching the advances. I mean, Ugladar is going down. I, 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 you know, everywhere. The, the front is crumbling. Kirsch, they've killed uh, 8,000 Ukrainians in the last couple, three weeks. I mean, who the hell? I mean, can you imagine 8,000 uh, U.S. citizens dead over in Iraq or Afghanistan? What the, what the response might have been back here in the United States? These are the numbers that are coming out. I mean, the, the Russians right now are crushing Ukraine. This war will be, I mean, and I, okay, uh, Mr. That Cybersecurity Guy, you've made predictions in the past. You said that the war was going to be over at this time. You said the war was going to be over at that time. You, you predicted that uh, Iran was going to launch on, uh, on uh, Israel. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, and when I say predictions, I always had a caveat. I said, I, you know, I'm not a prophet, man. I can't predict these things. It just looked like the logical conclusion to these things. But now, I am 100% certain that the war in Ukraine will be over before the election on November 5th. I mean, and when I say over, I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be obvious to all Americans that, that the, the war is lost. Now, Ukraine might not surrender before November 5th, uh, but I, and, and maybe the media, the mainstream uh, Democrat uh, propaganda government media might not... Uh, report on anything that's going on, but I, you know, a lot of people have VPNs. Uh, a lot of people have kids that are on TikTok or or uh, X or other platforms that you know they're they're old idiot parents that don't get the news. They just watch uh, Fox or or CNN or MSDNC or or ABC or CBS. I mean, or BBC. I mean, that's where they get all of their information, which is all government propaganda. But I'm telling you. It's, it, for all intents and purposes, it will be over by the election. And the same with Israel in, uh, in Gaza. Do I think the Iranians are going to launch? I don't know, man. I was thinking today, maybe those carriers have about six months of supplies on board. And I think that's, I, I think that's what 
my understanding is when they come out of port, I think they've got about a six month tour before they run out of supplies. And like I told you, Iran is trying to deplete those supplies on those carriers. And so, you know, they're just waiting, you know, they're going to wait until one of those carrier battle groups has to go into port and resupply. So we could be looking at months before Iran launches on, on uh, Israel. And I've heard conflicting reports. Uh, you know, Israel just launched 100 planes and they bombed the shit out of it at Lebanon. And they're saying they got a lot of those missile launchers. Other people have said they didn't hit anything. Who knows what the truth is? It's somewhere, obviously, probably in between. I'm sure that they got a lot of the missile launchers. So Hezbollah could be defanged at this point as far as their ability to attack Israel. And right now, Israel's going through the West Bank and exterminating all those people, those Palestinians. So not only have they exterminated Gaza, now they're going through the West Bank. So uh, And then there's been these huge protests in Israel. I don't know if you're following along. Uh, now, conflicting reports once again. There were six hostages. Okay? All that I'm saying is a lot of people are saying that the Israel, uh, in their attempt to get Hamas, they killed the hostages. And that's why these people are protesting. Other people say that it was Hamas that killed the hostages. I don't know, man. I just watch it and I go like, well, you know, what do I think is the more likely possibility? I think Israel killed their own hostages. And that's why people are pissed off in freaking Israel and protesting the hell out of the government. I could be wrong, right? I've been wrong about many things in my life. Uh, so, uh, and by the way, I've been putting up some good music videos. Uh, uh, man, I found this one. By the way, I, you know, if you didn't know, back in high school, I was a trumpet player in a marching band. And uh, it, was, it was freaking great. I loved being in the marching band. Uh, we were number one, by the way, in the country. I mean, you know, it was for a high school band. In fact, we played at a couple of the um, NFL events in the Redskins. You know, they invited us in for, for their band. Uh, it was pretty cool, man. And being a kid, I mean, you know, that's a huge event in your life. But anyway, uh, the, the latest video was one of my favorite songs. Uh, uh, how does it go? Another put up soldier. We must be mistaken with their tanks and their bombs and their bombs and their guns. Idio hey, idio hey, they are dying. Now it's zombie, but it was it was a a, a band that actually had trombones, uh, trumpets. Uh, of course, they got, it was a great video. They had all these masks and everything. On. So I put that up on my channel. Maybe go to X. You might want to watch it. Uh, uh. Yeah, we, and we did the, the Tucker Carlson thing. So I guess uh, we can almost finish the video off right there. But I just wanted to conclude with some final thoughts here, man. You do understand that the Democrats are desperate. And when I say Democrats, I'm talking about the Marxist, communist, uh, fascist lunatics that we have in the government. What do you think they're going to do? when Russia rolls over what is the remainder of Ukraine. And, you know, they're looking at their... This is an existential threat to the, uh, the powers that be in the United States. And, of course, in Europe. I mean, I don't know if you followed the German elections. They just... They call them right-wing. I call them the populist right. Just made some serious gains in, in, in uh, uh, Germany. Are they going to be able to take Schultz out and put in a new... Um, uh, Prime Minister there? No. No. In fact, I, I just saw today that one of the people in the uh, staff, uh, he, they think somehow they, they said that his election was invalidated. And so now they have back the majority. So they so nothing has really changed in Germany other than they lost uh, the Green Party lost a lot. Uh, so you, if you want to learn all about the German election, just go to Ant. Alexander, thank God, I could try to get the name. <laughs> so does. Alexander, go to Alexander, and uh, he, he went into detail. I mean, it was, in fact, it was way over my head because he's talking about all these parties and everybody gained this and everybody gained that. And I'm just like, whoo, mate, way too much detail. I just want to know did the politics in Germany change? And bottom line, they did not. Uh, I mean, they changed, but they didn't change where su significant things can be done. France, kind of the same way. There's some things going on in France. I don't know if you saw, there's a huge church burning down in France. 
Uh, we don't know whether it was arson or, or what took place. Uh, it was another uh, icon of, of history. Uh, you know, the, I don't know if you do. A couple years ago, there was another huge church, and they rebuilt it. Uh, I hope they're not using wood in that the one that they rebuilt. Uh, and you know, the thing I don't understand is why is there security around these old churches? You've already had one instance in in France. I mean, you know, and you've got all of this illegal immigration coming into France. You got to know that that's going to be a huge target for people that hate Christianity. That they're going to burn the damn ch church down. What I'm saying, and then of course you've got Israel. Israel, I don't think they're going to survive to the election. And when I say survive, I mean, I, I think that they're going to enter into uh, a crisis. It may be, a lot of people are saying civil war. I don't know about that. Uh, but I'm telling you, I mean, things are bad over there. Economically, uh, you know, there's like, what, 90,000 people out of the West Bank. They're having to put them up in hotels and pay for everything. If they weren't getting the money from the United States billionaires, Israel would just cease to exist overnight. And then, of course, there's a lot of people that have left Israel. I mean, you know, that, that state is a failing state at this point. And, of course, the Zionists, I mean, they, they're still in the majority. I mean, most of the population in Israel wants to exterminate the Palestinians. And, of course, Trump, uh, you got the RFK Jr., and Biden or Kamala, they all are for exterminating the Palestinians. And how does that look to the rest of the world? And last... Last but not least, good God, I mean, Turkey just came out and said they want to join BRICS. Now, Turkey tried forever to get into the European Union, and of course they were rejected, but now they're going to join BRICS. So we got, uh, in October is the big BRICS meeting. I mean, this could be the existential death of the dollar. And then I'm watching another video tonight on how the banks are all failing. Warren Buffett just sold more of his Bank of America stock. Another, like, I don't know how much it was. I mean, it was insane. I mean, $25 million or $25 billion. I don't know. I mean, but, I mean, he's selling off his banking stocks like crazy. Now, why do you think Warren Buffett, the big whale, would be selling all his banking stocks? He's got to be seeing the writing on the wall. I mean, I think we're looking at some huge events in the banking industry. And I've been telling you about the commercial real estate that's about to die. Anyway, I guess I, I, I don't have any good news, but I just do have some personal advice. I mean, one of the things that I do is I keep a spreadsheet and I have uh, timelines for when I do stuff around the house and I adjust it accordingly. And so today... I was looking at my water pitcher filter and I'm thinking, man, you know, it's hot this time of the year. I've been drinking a crap load of water. And, and I did a, a video on fluoride and I told you that fluoride is bad for you. Okay. And so I was wondering if my Purolator filter would filter out fluoride. It does not. It does filter lead, which is good. Uh, and it does a lot of other good things, but it does not filter fluoride out of the water. So now I'm looking at, well, eventually i got to get a new filter solution. But in the meantime, I've got all of these pure later filters that I'm going to go ahead and use. So anyway, I mean, we can't be perfect about everything we do in life, but we can try to go out and gather information as best we can to, to, to do uh, what is best for, for our household. So, I mean, if, if you're not filtering your tap water at all, <laughs> you're a complete idiot. I mean, you need some type of filtration, you know, uh, whether it be Purolator or Brita or whatever you want to use. I mean, there's, and like I said, there's, there, there, you got to look at this point for a filter that takes out the fluoride. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the, the, the sheet. So, you know, I'm looking at it and I'm going and I'm watching out in my back window because yesterday I took the day off. Uh, I don't know about you, every now and then I just snap. And I just got to spend a day, I was watching some brainless idiot stuff on Netflix, uh, I don't know, Witches of something. Uh, the girl on it was cute, and that's why I just kept watching it. It was it was a love story, you know, I kind of get into those, and I watched, it was like eight episodes, I, I did a whole marathon, I, and then I went to bed at six in the morning. <laughs> so, but then you wake up and you go like, ah, oh, dang it, I got to get something done. And so I look at the sheet, and I'm thinking, okay, got to get up on the roof, blow out the gutters, you know, blow the leaves out of the rock, you know, at least get something done every single day. And especially 
it's not just the day-to-day -day stuff. I barely keep up with that. And I understand you do too, but always try to make some progress on some project that you've been looking at going, I got to get that done, whether it be painting a wall or like me, I got a, an area on the garage that I need to, to paint or, uh, you know, getting rid of the cart or charging the batteries. The battery project is done. That was a big project. That wasn't something that was on my to-do list. All right, God knows. I'm sorry I went on so long. Peace out and stay free. Don't let the Democrats censor you. We must fight back. Fight, fight, fight. No, you